In May, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu avoided going to early elections by forming a unity government with the opposition, the Kadima Party. That gave Netanyahu's coalition a sweeping majority in the parliament, 94 seats. But the political alliance has proved to be very short-lived. Just 70 days later, the head of Kadima, Shaul Mofaz, says his party is quitting the coalition. Kadima is leaving over disagreements about how to write a new bill that would require the ultra-Orthodox to serve in the Israeli army. Debates over what will replace the tall bill brought down the unity government. Set to expire in August, the bill currently exempts most of the ultra-Orthodox from doing mandatory army service. The Israeli public is deeply divided on what should come next. Many Israelis who are less traditional are outraged at what they say is the unfair burden they shoulder in protecting and dying for the country. But the ultra-Orthodox want their children's rights to study, Torah and Talmud to take precedence over military service. Shaul Mofaz entered into the unity government, promising Kadima voters and the public he would solve the issue with Netanyahu and the Likud. He proposed a bill that would require all the ultra-Orthodox to be drafted at the age of 18, like all other Israelis. But Netanyahu reportedly had something else in mind. He proposed half of the ultra-Orthodox would be drafted into the army from the ages of 18 to 23. The other half would do national civil service from the ages of 23 to 26. Neither side was willing to budge on its position. In protest, Kadima lawmakers voted 25 to 3 to leave the coalition. Mofaz and others slammed Netanyahu for protecting the interests of the right-wing religious communities over the general public. Others say Netanyahu was being pragmatic. For Netanyahu, he comes off as uh, not giving in totally to either side, but trying to, to find the middle road, and that's important, and also acting as a leader, meaning he broke it off because Kadima just put in conditions that were unattainable, that if, if they would have accepted Kadima's conditions of uh, draft age at 18, and then that would have passed legislation, we would have had you know, pretty much a civil war here, or, uh, or certainly, you know, great, the, the entire country would be split in half. And Netanyahu isn't interested in that. Quitting the coalition is another political blow to the Kadima party, whose popularity continues to plummet. Mofaz was supposed to revive the battered image of the 28-member party after what was seen as Zippy Livni's ineffectual leadership. Kadima is in a lot of trouble. They know that they're in a lot of trouble. And I think we're going to see some type of, of a re remake of what Kadima is with some of the Kadima members joining the Likud, some possibly joining uh, Labor or Yair Lapid's party. And Kadima is going to be a much, much smaller faction. That's good news for Prime Minister Netanyahu. Just a few years ago, Kadima was his and the Likud party's biggest political threat. So, what does the departure of Kadima mean for Netanyahu's government? Well, it will not bring his coalition crashing down. Not now, at least. Netanyahu still has a strong 66-seat majority, and the second largest party in the coalition, Avigdor Lieberman's Yisrael Beitenu, says they are not going anywhere. But the political divorce with Kadima will likely take its toll on Prime Minister Netanyahu in the months ahead. Disagreements on the draft bill and the settlement issue, which were not solved with Kadima, still plague his current coalition. Lawmakers are already talking about plans to call for early elections when the Israeli parliament returns from its summer recess in October. That means voting for a new Israeli prime minister could begin as early as January or February. Jordana Miller, JN1, Jerusalem.